welcome back. All right, so we're outside, and of course, as you know, I do live in the middle of a city. And so as I have said, that a lot of times when you're dealing with foraging and food collection, when you're in a city, you have a lot more challenges. You either have to grow it with, and with the lack of water, sometimes that can be a challenge. And natural foraging is often even more of a challenge because a lot of times inside the cities, you know, with all the asphalt and concrete, there's not a lot of areas where like a lot of trees or plants are actually growing. However, as I said in my, in my intro video, a lot of times the cities will put in plants that actually produce edible parts that you may or may not know about. And I know that they're not doing this intentionally. And that's why taking an inventory of your surroundings and knowing like what, what, what you naturally have around you is so very, very important. So, because a lot of times when they put it, what, what they put in for ornamental reasons, decorative, you know, you know, when, when they're doing their landscaping, actually produce food that you can eat. So, and what, I, and what I'm about ready to show you is something that um, is very common in a lot of landscaping. Uh, it's present here where I'm at, in my current location. But I've also seen it at a lot of the apartment complexes around the city. And I don't think that people realize it because... Um, Again, they're just put in for landscape reasonings, and so not a lot of people realize it. However, that's why it's important for you to know what you have in your environment so that you can take a good inventory and you know exactly what you're dealing with. So here in a minute, I'm going to flip the camera around and we're going to uh, discuss what I've already talked to you about. Now, before I do that, it is important to understand that not every part of this plant is edible. It's strictly just the nuts that are produced by it that are edible. Now, um, a lot of people don't realize that they're edible because of the fact that if you try eating one of these nuts without taking the proper steps, it's extremely bitter. So, now some of you may already know what I'm talking about, but if not, we're about ready, about ready to show you. I'm going to find a, about as healthy as one as I can find here. It's sad because some monster brutalized these trees, and so the actual development of the nuts was... was uh, we did have a dry year, but whoever whoever trimmed these trees this year, they were monsters and they really damaged them a lot. But I'm already here in a minute and we're gonna go ahead into the discussion. So as we can see here, we are looking at an oak tree. Now, this particular one, and as you can see, there's a lot of them around this area, but they were, have been brutalized, as you can see. Some monster decided to really brutalize them when they when they pruned them up. But so now as we go in here, you can see here that there were some acorns on here, but most of them have fallen off. The, really all you have left here are the caps. And so, but here's one that, as you can see, but the development is, was very, it was very, very bad this year. And I think that was partially because we did have a dry year and also because, as you can see, whoever topped this, they just took it and they just cut it up. They took no care to it. However, if we look on the ground here, we can see that in the past, we've had some very large size, actually this one might be might be good too. But as you can see, we've, we've had some very large acorns. So we know that this does produce large ones, however you see a lot of these smaller ones down here too. So now these large acorns, now if you just crack these open and you try eating them, you're gonna get a bitter surprise that you're not gonna like because these have a high amount of tannins in them. And what makes it even worse, and that's why it's important that you do, you do inventory what you have here, as you see these leaves here, how they have this, this, these points on them, how they're very pointed. This is a red oak. This is of the red oak family. Now, oaks come in two families. You've got red oaks and you've got white oaks. Now, the white oaks, they still have tannins in them, but they have much fewer tannins. And so, the, the process that required to uh, leach the, tan the tannins out is much faster and much simpler. And that's something that hopefully this October we'll be able to get a good harvest from somewhere in the city and we'll collect up a bunch of the acorns and we'll actually go through the process. So that's why it's so important that you take inventory of all of your surroundings. Now all these acorns on the ground here, 
right? They're not going to get cleaned up over the year, obviously. So basically, when we do have a healthy harvest, we actually can harvest like a lot more of these acorns. What, we're, what we'll end up doing is we're going to pick up a whole bunch of these acorns, even the old ones here. Okay, like I said, I think a couple of these might still be good, but it's so hard to tell. And right now, I'm not going to collect them. I'm, I may come out here in a few days and, and start, you know, picking up all these ones that I can find. And I'm, you know what, next week we might be doing a video as to how to um, tell the difference between a good acorn and a bad acorn without, you know, going through the process of cracking open every single acorn that you see. Because basically what you can do is, well, we'll, we'll say that for another video, but I'm going to show you how you harvest them all up. And then you can actually test them before you crack them open. So then that way you know which ones you can eat and which ones you can't. And then we'll, we'll go through the process of that as well. But, um, yeah, so in, you have to like really, really, really inventory your surroundings. Because um, as I said, I mean, if you, there's not a lot of, you know, when you're inside a city like this, there's not a lot that you can do. And so, and if everybody knew about it, then these acorns would probably all be picked up. And the thing is, the acorns, they've been a staple for a large, large part of our history. You know, people don't eat them anymore, really. But they used to be, they used to be almost like a wheat. Um, you know, a lot of, a lot of the Native Americans, native to, to the uh, United States, the Southwest, you know, the, the North, you know. And what they would do is they would collect up the acorns, and after you process them properly, you can uh, grind them into a powder and that powder can be used pretty much the same as flour and so it has a little bit more of a nutty flavor of course because they are nuts and um, so it will have a bit of a nuttier flavor but you can actually bake with them you can almost anything that you can do with flour you can do with acorn powder and so with that you know you can use those to um, thicken stuff up you can use them you know you can make bread out of them and actually the bread that you can make out of them it's not really like bread bread but almost like a kind of like a cracker type thing I guess you'd say kind of like a pancake and um, but it'll have a, a very earthy nutty flavor and uh, so that's something that we hopefully hopefully this next October uh, September October when they do start to fall next year we'll be able to get a good enough harvest and we'll go through the uh, the leaching process so we can get all the tannins out of it and then we'll dry them up and then you know, we'll uh, we'll go ahead and we'll we'll put them through a coffee grinder or something, and we'll we'll grind them up, and we'll actually bake with them, and then we you know we'll go through the steps on how to actually use your acorn powder so that you can produce food, and um, and it's something if you live in an area in the United States or anywhere else where acorns or where acorn oak trees are very prevalent, then you have a very natural source of food that's really easy to harvest. I mean, you'll have to fight the squirrels for it, possibly. But it's something that when they fall to the ground, you just pick them up. You figure out which ones are good, which ones are not good. And then you just go ahead and you, you make your flour. So, and when you're in the city, it's not going to be as easy because there's not as many. But a lot of cities use oak trees. I think more of the red oaks than the white oaks. But um, I know that we've got a, a lot of the apartment complexes around here. A lot of the businesses, they'll have uh, these red oaks in front of them. And I know that it's strictly for landscape design because nobody's actually thinking, hey, we're gonna pr we're gonna put fruit here. Otherwise, they put in like apple trees. But then that's that's a whole other issue, right? Because then you're gonna have people just stealing the apples. So and then that would actually, you know, when you're thinking about capitalism, that's actually gonna be something that well, if they can get free food, they're not gonna be going to the store to buy it. So and that's why sometimes natural foraging one is uh, so challenging, but it's also fun. So and. Um, and so, like I said, we're going to start identifying some of the plants in my area. And, it, and I'm going to try to identify plants that are going to be prevalent either naturally or man-induced, you know, pretty much wherever you're at. So, now some things might just be in the southwest because, I mean, that's where I live. So, you know, you might not see everything that I, that I identify you might not have in your area. However... That doesn't mean that you don't have additional plants that I don't have that you can uh, turn around and you can turn into food. So, at any rate, um, yeah. So this is kind of like the the first the the first foraging video. I plan on doing you know every week, every week, every Thursday. Uh, we're gonna be doing into uh, natural foraging, gardening, uh, possibly hunting. I'm not real sure about that. Um, you know, I don't want to 
I don't want to put any video up that's going to, you know, cause any issues. But uh, we're definitely going to do a lot of foraging and gardening because there's, surprisingly enough, there's a lot of plants in this area that we can forage. They, they can turn into food even here in the desert. And it's important to know what you can eat and what you can't eat. What's edible and what's poisonous. So, but um, until next time, uh, you know, if you come on the first time on your channel, please consider subscribing. I'd really appreciate it. Um, give me that thumbs up. Give me a few comments. I really like that. Uh, it also helps the algorithm. So push my videos out to more people. So until then, stay crazy.